Hello, Artful Manifestors. Welcome to your reading. Thank you so much for joining and thank you for all the likes, subscribes, shares, and comments. I do read all your comments and it means so much to me. To show you my appreciation, I am giving away a free personalized tarot reading. All you have to do to qualify is subscribe to this channel, like this video, and type Eclipse in the comments below. I'll be announcing the winner to that tarot reading on April 8th during the eclipse. All right, let's begin. For today's reading, we're finding out what is about to bloom in your life. What is the spring energy facilitating to nurture and grow in your life at this time? This is a generalized reading. It's many people are watching it, so there may be some specific messages that aren't for everyone. Take what resonates and leave the rest for others. I do invite you at this time to connect with your guides as I connect with mine and ask for their assistance in interpreting any sounds that you hear, the images that you see, and the message that I share. All right, I've got these three. All right, so for pile number one, we have Mercury messages. And for pile number two, we have Capricorn, achieve. And for pile number three, we have debilitated discomfort. All right, if you aren't sure yet as to which pile you want to listen to. Let me introduce the crystals to help you make your choice. For pile number one, we have some citrine. And for pile number two, we have some blue goldstone. And for pile number three, we have porcelain jasper. So whichever image and or stone you're most drawn to, that's probably the reading meant for you. Of course, you're always welcome to listen to all three of the readings or two of the readings as they may shed additional light on your situation or they may pertain to different areas of your life. So of course, we could be we could experience things blossoming and blooming in multiple areas of our life. You'll find a link to the readings in the description box below. Hello, pile number one. Welcome to your reading. You chose the card Mercury Messages, which is all about communication, communication of all types. Messages you receive, communications that you make, whether it's in written form or verbal, all kinds of communication and messages. And I love this. Citrine is about communication, amongst other things. It's also about courage, creativity, happiness, hope, confidence, self-esteem. All right, I mean, it's. I love how these two energies already go together, but let's see if we can get some more information, more details about perhaps how communication is expanding in your life at this time. All right, we have, oh, wow, rabbit spirit. 
now is a lucky time. Could not be more auspicious and validating than to pull the rabbit on this day. Wonderful, I love that. Very lucky. All right. I do put the names of all the cards that I use in the description box below, if that's something that you're interested in. Alter All right, let's get some more information. What is pile number one about to grow? Now what these two fell out of the deck, so I'm gonna take these two. All right, we have B. Interesting. Community, cooperation, and sweetness. And roots, healthy patterns, early growth. All right, very interesting. All right, let's get some tarot cards and see what else we can find out about pile number one's expansion at this time, what's growing for them, what opportunities for growth, blossoming, they experiencing with the spring energy. All right, we have the Two of Swords. Pentacles. And Queen of Wands. And Five of Cups. I see two major things happening for you this spring. And the reason I say that is we have the two of swords. We see two swords here. We have two snakes intertwined here. We have two candles here. Two cups still standing here. So there's two things happening and they're intertwined just as these snakes are and the roots under this tree are intertwined, they're connected. So the two of swords represents indecision, avoidance, inner conflict. So you're gonna be confronting any inner barriers or conflicts that may be hindering your ability to communicate effectively. If we don't know what we want or don't want, we don't have that clarity, then it's hard to communicate it. And so you're going to be getting that clarity. You're going to be receiving a balanced perspective 
that will help you to communicate effectively what you need and help you not to avoid making decisions or difficult conversations. When I initially pulled this card out, I thought this was a mirror. And here we see an individual reflected back. So if we are not clear in understanding what we want, then that's reflected back to us. Others aren't clear in what they have to offer or don't offer. And so I see all this, this is, you know, all about to change for you. You have opportunities coming your way. And one of them we see with the nine of pentacles, which represents self-sufficiency, abundance, and material well-being. The universe is supporting you in improving your communication skills by helping you cultivate a sense of confidence and independence. Trust in your abilities. Value your own unique perspective. This will give you greater authenticity and authority and allowing you to communicate more effectively. So you're going to have some opportunity coming your way because it's pentacles. It's something practical. It could be in the form of a job or a promotion. Nines are about completing something. You're almost there. And again, these two things are intertwined. So either you're going to have some kind of aha moment, revelation, understanding, which will change your perception and bring you clarity, allowing you to communicate better, which will facilitate this positive uh, opportunity achievement. Or because you get this new job or this, you attain this, you complete this, you're going to understand something and have this confidence in communicating better. You're getting to the root of something. And anything that you start now, you also want it to have strong roots. So roots explore the soil, they search for water and nutrients and they create healthy patterns. And so this is what's happening for you is you are establishing healthy patterns by understanding what is at the root of things. And one way that's going to help you understand that is the Five of Cups. You may look at the Five of Cups and think that it's a not great card uh, because it does represent loss, regret, emotional disappointment, but this is the key to bringing you clarity about what you want and don't want. And so, for example, you can strengthen your inner voice, your inner knowing by using disappointment uh, relief, excitement, our emotions to indicate what it is that we really want or don't want. So you can practice this with things that don't hold a lot of um, significant consequences, like um, deciding what you want to wear in the morning, right? Maybe choose two things and you're not sure if you want to wear this red outfit or this blue outfit. What you can do is flip a coin. Heads, it's red. Tails, it's blue. 
and let's say that it's heads, which would be red, and you feel disappointed immediately or initially when you first flip that coin, that's an indicator that what is in alignment with you in that moment is the other choice, the blue outfit or the blue shirt. If on the other hand, you flip it and you feel a sense of relief when you get heads, which is the red shirt or red outfit, then you know you're in alignment with what you need at that time because you're relieved that you didn't get the other choice. And then the other thing that you could feel is excited, which is validation that yes, the red outfit was the correct outfit. So the, the purpose of the coin toss is not to relinquish or surrender your power of decision but instead to give you an opportunity to see what is that gut reaction, that initial reaction upon making the choice. And so what's happening for you in this time is you're going to have clarity and, and it's going to come through disappointment, excitement, relief. All of these emotions are bringing you clarity so that you have a better understanding about the right choice to make. And that's also going to help you communicate your needs better. So it's a good thing. It's a, it's a way, it's a tool for you to use to understand that what you want. The other thing I want to share with you is that on this altar is the Book of Shadows. Initially, I thought it was a mirror. So again, it's that idea of what you give, you get. Just like we see this figure uh, reflected back. So if you're confused and you're indecisive, you're going to be getting that energy back. But again, that's clearing away because you're going to begin to use your emotions as a tool for your understanding. But also with the Book of Shadows, what this tells me is perhaps some of you are thinking about writing or you already have begun to write a book or a blog, a, a short story, poems, something. Uh, and of course, this is coming right underneath the Nine of Pentacles. Some of you may even have an opportunity to do writing for a publication some type of writing you know we do have the overall theme of communication and messages here present in your reading this is very specific for some of you uh, for others it's that writing journaling will bring you that clarity that you may be seeking and just writing down your thoughts emptying your head, writing down observations that you make, writing down journals, and also writing down your intentions, sitting down and thinking about what is it that you want at this time. You have the rabbit, now is a lucky time, and basically this card is saying that whatever seeds you plant right now are going to grow, but with the roots, healthy patterns, early growth. There's a message to take your time and think about exactly how you want that to be. So a good way to do this activity, this journaling, is to think about how you want to feel and then nurture that feeling. Notice when you feel that way, when you don't feel that way, and that's going to lead you to more of that feeling. So again, there's a message for some of you that there could be an opportunity in career or finances uh, with writing. And for others, it's using journaling and writing to set intentions and work towards goals to bring clarity into your life about things that maybe you're trying to figure out and understand. 
All in all, it's very good on both accounts. The Queen of Wands represents charisma and confidence, leadership. You are beginning to empower and embody these qualities, the qualities of the Queen of Wands. So you're going to start to recognize and express your ability to charm. You're going to have this enthusiasm and passion in your communication. You're going to inspire others with your communication and your energy. So this is where you're headed. And you're no longer going to fear disappointment. You're going to recognize it as a tool. And you're also going to be recognizing those things that you still have, the blessings that you do have. We see here, this person has their back turned on the sun shining, the rainbow, the butterflies, the two cups that are still standing. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be focusing on those things that are working, the blessings that you still have. And that's going to be reflected back to you. And you're going to have that multiplied in your life, which is absolutely amazing. I do want to read to you what this card says. Give me just a second. Let me find it. Okay. Bees inspire thoughts of sweetness and community. Bees work together, functioning in cooperation with others to advance the health and safety of their entire hive. Communication is central to this goal. In the end, through hard work and service to others, they create something pure and sweet, honey. It's the sweetness of honey that reminds us to be kind to others. The B card asks you to consider if you feel fulfilled and connected in your relationships or if you need to communicate your needs to others more. Remember to be kind whenever you can and to meet any challenge with an open heart. So again, there's that idea of communication. It's all over your spread and it's going to be elevated in various ways. You're going to have multiple opportunities to understand, to bring clarity, and you're also being encouraged to ask others for clarification when they communicate with you. If you feel that you're being activated with uh, hurt, disappointment, anything like that when somebody expresses something to you stay curious rather than allowing yourself to uh, react and create new healthy patterns by staying curious and asking for clarification what did you mean by that why did you say that you know what are you uh, expressing at this moment stay curious ask for clarification lots of clarification. I do also want to read to you about this card in Mercury. It says, communicate. The mood is quick, fast, and cerebral. Look at your situation from many different sides. Be light on your feet and make sure you have all the information you need. If not, be ready to research, investigate, translate, meditate, mediate, Check your facts and learn. Follow up on all lines of communication to make sure others understand what you said and you understand what they intended. Publish, broadcast, network, and engage social media. Make the call, submit the resume, send the manuscript, check all Mercury-ruled equipment such as vehicles and communication, electronics, proofread, and back up your files. If you need to go down into your own personal underworld, it may be time to walk with a therapist, shamanic healer, or other integrous guide into the deep realm, just as Mercury, when he worked with himself, 
He also played the role of psychopomp, diving into the underworld to escort trapped spirits out of it. Listen deeply to the messages of your soul, the conduit to spirit, and become the messenger. Amazing. So yeah, it could not be more clear that at this time, communication is key and it is going to be a strong theme for you during this spring. And it is the way for you to grow, for you to complete something, for you to shine, and for you to recognize the blessings around you and have them multiplied. Amazing. And that is your message, pile number one. The light in me recognizes the light in you. Thank you. Hello, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. You chose the goldstone crystal, which helps to achieve goals. It also helps to promote positivity and release tension. It's helpful in hello pile number two welcome to your reading you chose the blue gold stone which helps one to achieve their goals attain their goals but it also helps to increase promote positivity by reducing tension you also chose the card Capricorn, Achieve, which is, of course, about achieving goals. It has the added caveat of doing it through positive relationships, positive energy, benefiting others with your goals, setting goals that not only help yourself, but help the community, the world at large, or uh, people that you know. All right, let's get some more information and find out more about these goals. What is going to be happening in relation to these goals this spring with this spring energy? What is happening for pile number two? I do put the names of all the cards that I use in the description box below if that's something that you're interested in. All right, let's see what we have here. Porcupine Spirit, Time for Beginner's Mind. This is all about being curious and being authentic, being yourself. All right, let's get some more clarification. All right, we have the chalice. It looks like the Ace of Cups. This is an Oracle deck though. But we see my cup runneth over. All right, let's keep going. Let's see, there are two cards right there. Okay, so we have the Oak Tree, Power, Courage, Strength. And spring, rebuilding, awakening, rebirth. Look at that. That is amazing. All right, let's draw some tarot cards and find out some more information. Get the whole picture. 
what is blooming and blossoming for you. Are you achieving or working on achieving during this spring energy? Pentacles. Look at the feathers hanging from the tree and the feathers hanging on this porcupine. Strength. Queen of Pentacles. There is a lot going on in this picture. And Prince of Swords. The universe is helping you to find your bliss, whatever that may be. I want to read to you about the chalice, what the creator of this deck says in their guidebook. The chalice is a symbol of blessing, consecration, consecration. <clears throat> the universe is helping you to find your bliss. I want to share with you what the creator of this deck has to say about this card. The chalice is a symbol of blessing, consecration, consecration, and bliss. Whatever is placed within it is made sacred and transfers that sanctity to those who drink from it. The waters flow forth endlessly, symbolizing the wellspring of divine love. In ritual and magic, its primary elemental energy is water, and its direction on the sacred circle is west. Drink deep from the vessel of life and love. Feel yourself connected to the waters of the world. One is harmonious union, one in harmonious union with all beings. You are offered a chance to seek your bliss. Answer the call. Beautiful. The Knight of Pentacles represents diligence, reliability, determination, and I do see that you are a determined being. The energy of the Knight of Pentacles is one of myth method, methodical practices. And while that has a place, I feel that perhaps the universe is ushering in maybe a new approach to doing things. Not to abandon this approach, but maybe to add a new way of doing things to what you already do. And 
And the reason I say that is, one, this is at the beginning of your reading, and underneath it we have Porcupine Spirit. Let's read what the creator of this deck says about Porcupine Spirit. When Porcupine Spirit calls your name, you are being asked to adopt a beginner's mind and to approach situations with innocence and curiosity. The old confining stories no longer have a hold on you. Life is full of surprises, hiding in plain sight. Looking at the world afresh with new eyes can help you find what you have been seeking. Whether it is in a relationship, an opportunity, or evidence that you have all you need right now to co-create what you desire. Porcupine asks you to be playful and have a childlike curiosity. There is so much waiting for you that you have yet to discover. So again, I feel like there's a new, a breath of fresh air flowing into your consciousness, opening your eyes to new ways of doing things. Strength represents courage, resilience, and inner fortitude. You have this strength and resilience as a, as a result of your past failures, your past wounds, your past lessons, things that you have learned. This is you being stronger as a result of those things. You have the confidence and patience, the knowing, the resilience to overcome any obstacles that may arise in your endeavor. What's interesting to me too, is if we look at these two cards, which are the beginning, we have a lot of things, you know, all of these charms, all of these feathers, little bones, antlers, shells, beads, um, crystals, a shield, all of this stuff. And then in the very next card, we have Strength, who, without any of those things, has tamed a lion and been able to pick up this snake. We see the snake is still alive. It's not hanging limp, but it still has life in it. And yet she is holding it, walking next to a lion with confidence. So on her own, without the assistance of all this extra stuff, she's able to do this, accomplish these things. It's her strength and her resilience that got her there, not all of this extra stuff. And we see this extra stuff on this porcupine as well. And then with the chalice, we, we see a very plain image, just a very plain golden chalice. Not a whole lot of um, ornamental aspects to it. It's very smooth and plain, yet it's overflowing with bliss, with love, with divine love. We see a heart here on her chest. So... Perhaps you have this perception that the way to do things is this very methodical way. Maybe there's a belief surrounding uh, that things that are worthwhile require suffering, sacrifice, a lot of work. Um, and then there's the idea of protection because porcupines have quills. And we see here this figure holding a shield. And so what I see is this huge transformation, uh, again, with you seeing things with a new set of eyes, finding a simpler way of doing things by staying curious and being open to things. 
instead of this porcupine having the quills standing up, not allowing things in, the quills are laying down. So it's in a more receptive state. The Queen of Pentacles is about abundance and nurturing. It's this card looks very magical. Um, we have so much going on, like I mentioned. It's about nurturing and resourcefulness. I want to read to you what the creator says about this card. All right. The Queen of Pentacles is the mother of the land and nature. She has deep understanding, love, and respect for both. The Queen embodies the elements of water and earth, balancing and integrating the fluid feminine intuitiveness with the earthly feminine energy of Mother Earth, resulting in spiritual receptivity on the physical plane. The queen is aware of the magic in nature and the strength and lessons that spiral from it. She is a healer versed in herbal medicine. The queen of pentacles is in tune with the heartbeat of the earth and the cycles and rhythms of its elements. Her gift of balancing the four elements creates a sacred place to manifest ideas and inspirations into a physical form. The Queen of Pentacles believes in the magic, miracles, and wonderment of what life has to offer. And so what I see happening as a result of this transformation we see with the dragonflies is a, a better way of creating, a magical way of creating and you experiencing a, an abundant life. You being able to really create whatever it is that you want, being a, a master manifester. So it's not in just one area that you experience success, but in multiple areas. And you know what I just realized too is here we have the Knight of Pentacles, which is again about practical, earthly things, um, physical things, but practical is what's really coming to mind for me now. And then we end with the swords. And the swords, the Prince of Swords, represents curiosity, intellect, and new ideas. So the universe is assisting you by encouraging you to remain open-minded and receptive to new information and opportunities. Embrace a curious and inquisitive attitude so that you may discover fresh perspectives and innovative solutions that can help you progress towards your goal. So you're, you're going through this transformation of being, having these very practical, methodical approaches to things, which are fine, but perhaps they are taking longer than you'd like them to to these fresh new ideas, new ways of thinking, new ways of discerning that are going to allow you to speed up how you manifest so that you can manifest much quicker. We see in this card, Luna Moths and these two ravens, which are um, the, they are the ravens that accompanied Odin, Hungan and M Mugen, thought and memory. And so 
again, we have this idea that you have this resilience and this strength based on your past. And while the memory is not bothering you, you still carry the lessons of the past with you. But we see this elevation of thought. We see this clear thinking. I think for some of you, you may also be returning to a past dream or something that you started but didn't finish. Maybe you had given up on it. Something that you were thinking about pursuing, but you never got around to it. We have here the oak tree, power, courage, and strength. So again, we have that idea of strength and courage that we find in the Knight of Pentacles and the Strength card and power from the Queen of Pentacles. But also, if we look at the size of this acorn, you see how big it is in relation to the tree. And so for me, I feel like one, this bliss is in multiple areas of your life. Two, this could be a dream that you've had for a long time. Something that you've been hoping for for a long time that now will sprout as a result of these new ideas, these fresh set of eyes that you're going to bring to the table. All right, lastly, spring. Let's see what the book has to say about spring. Give me one moment. All right. The reawakening of the earth is always inspiring. New life is on the horizon. It can be invigorating to witness the stirring of energy after a long rest. Spring tells you that it's time for new beginnings. It's the perfect time to launch a new project or if there are things you pre previously put on hold, the spring card suggests that now is an auspicious time to revisit them. You will bring a refreshed perspective to this project and a new level of energy that you didn't have before. Perhaps all that was needed was a new approach after some time away and a new burst of motivation and determination. Amazing. And so I feel that you are going to achieve your bliss you may be returning to some old projects or hopes, dreams that you had let go by the wayside. And with this Capricorn Achieve energy and the gold, blue gold stone, I do see you having the strength, the determination, the intellect, the ingenuity to be able to accomplish your bliss. Absolutely beautiful. Pile number two, that is your message. So excited for you. The light in me acknowledges the light in you. Thank you. Bye. Hello, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. You chose the card debilitated discomfort and debilitated is when a planet is in a sign that isn't really an environment for it to show its strengths. And so that's what the energy of this card is about. It's about being in a situation that's not your forte. It's maybe a little awkward or uncomfortable. Uh, but it's where growth happens, right? We invented air conditioners because we were too warm or too hot. And we invented heaters because we were too cold. And so it's through discomfort that our minds have the opportunity to expand and learn new things. You also chose this beautiful porcelain jasper with a little bit of pink in it. 
and this stone helps it offers emotional protection when dealing with difficult issues it has a calming nurturing energy and promotes feelings of stability safety and security all right so let's see how these two energies play into the rest of your message what is blooming for pile number three in this springtime you know what i'm going to take this top card that came out owl spirit you see clearly now interesting all right Let's get a card from here. I feel like this one wanted, oh, that's two. You know what? We're gonna take two. Two wanted to come out, we shall look at two. All right, we have the chalice, which came out in pile number two. And I, I swear to you, I put the cards in different places. I shuffle them in between readings always amazing when we get the same thing and we have the cauldron or the kettle the kettle it kind of looks like a cauldron right all right let's get another card All right, here we go. And we have earth, peace, grounding. All right. Let's get some tarot cards and see what else we can find out. Some more information about pile number three what's going to be going on for them, the spring energy. You know, I really felt this card spring up, jump out. All right. See what we have. The Knight of Swords. And the Hermit with another owl. It even looks like the same kind of owl, like a snowy owl. And, oh, give me one moment. All right, sorry about that. We want to be compliant with YouTube's rules. We have the star. And ace of pentacles. Very interesting. Wow. I mean, immediately, look at this. We see her stepping into this pool, and this space here looks like that pool. It's a portal, and I noticed this on the Hermit card as well. Something that looks like a portal. I mean, this looks like mountains here, but over here it looks very different. You see clearly now. Okay. Amazing. I think what's happening is you are 
experience something that's bringing clarity to your life, which is going to open up other opportunities for you. Let me tell you what the cards mean first, and then I'm going to tell you what I see. So the Knight of Swords represents swift action, ambition, determination. It's bringing about a period of rapid change, momentum, um, pursuing goals with assertiveness and determination. You see lots of energy in this card. The Hermit is a card that represents introspection, soul searching, inner guidance. It suggests that the current energies are facilitating a period of deep self-reflection and introspection. You may even be seeking solitude or withdrawing from external distractions in order to gain clarity and insight into your path forward. The star represents hope, inspiration, and spiritual renewal. You, it's suggesting that you're going to be experiencing a sense of optimism. You may be reconnecting with your sense of purpose and aligning with your true desires. Leading to a positive transformation and a renewed sense of faith in the future. The Ace of Pentacles represents new beginnings, opportunities, material abundance. It's about openings, pathways, opportunities for growth and prosperity. It's experiencing a tangible shift in your circumstances or receiving blessings and opportunities that have the potential to bring about significant transformations in your life. And here's what I see, that you have an owl here and an owl here. And the white snowy owl is regarded as a symbol of transformation. It's sometimes, in some cultures, regarded as a harbinger of death. Which we know that with death comes rebirth and transformation. So it all goes together. What I see with this particular illustration of the Knight of Swords, it's the first card in this tarot um, spread. It has a lot of energy, but it's going in the wrong direction. And so to me, this debilitated discomfort is a situation that maybe perhaps you put yourself in. So sometimes we think we want something, but not until we experience it and we have a full understanding of all that's entailed in that experience do we come to realize that it's not exactly what we wanted and hoped for. So for example, let's say somebody applies for a job thinking that that job is the answer to what they're seeking. But then once they really get into the job, they realize maybe that the hours don't work with them. Maybe the hours are too early for them or too late for them. Or maybe there's something about the culture. Maybe there are 
too many people coming and asking for help or asking for um, answers, which can feel overwhelming if that's not something that's in alignment for you. Or it could be the opposite. Maybe someone is left to work independently and they were hoping to work in an environment that offered them more social interaction. And so sometimes things look good on paper or in our minds. We have this vision or we're hopeful about it. But then once we actually experience it, it's not exactly what we wanted. And that's the kind of energy that I'm picking up from this card. It may not have to do with a job. That's just an example. But I have this impression that you went charging forward into this situation or you were pushed or thrust into the situation that isn't really aligning with your core values and it's not going to fulfill you and give you that bliss that you wanted. And so what this discomfort is providing for you is the motivation to find the clarity of what it is exactly that you want. We have here the chalice, which I mentioned came out in the previous reading. And this is a card about bliss and you having the opportunity to experience the blessings and bliss in your life. When I look at this card, what I'm seeing in the context of this reading is this overflowing, this sense of overwhelm, it, this idea that whatever situation or circumstance you're currently experiencing, the discomfort is causing this kind of overwhelm, this overflow. And the Hermit card, of course, we see somebody who's lighting the path. He's got transformation sitting on his arm by his side, guiding uh, the way, looking for a change, right? Looking for a way to transform this situation, this energy, this path. And so this is what I see for you is that you are finding a new path that is more in alignment with what you want to experience in life. So think about, you know, uh, the culture that you're currently in, the environment that you're currently in, the people that you're with, what kind of task you're being asked to perform, and what you like and don't like. And that's bringing you clarity as to what is the next step on your path. That's going to light the way for this transformation. The kettle card is about setting intentions. Let me read to you what the book says. Whether a traditional witch's cauldron or a simple kitchen kettle, the combination of water, emotion, with fire, action, transforms and energizes. When brewing a healing tea or a magic potion, the practitioner gathers ingredients with care adding focus and intention with each one. Turning up the heat gets things moving and extracts the potent powers needed to complete the task. It's time to light a fire under the situation and get things bubbling. Think about what you want to accomplish, what you wish and hope for, then make a solid plan of action to take the first steps towards that desire. And here we see in the star card, taking the step toward that new path, right? Toward that desire, this rebirth, this baptism, this awakening, this hopeful path that is more in alignment with your highest good. So the hermit was the introspection uh, the understanding of why this was the wrong direction, why it was taking you away from feeling fulfilled and energized and whole and rewarded, recognized, and 
understanding that so that you can, you know, create your potion, set your intentions, and follow it with action to step towards your new path. And then we have the Ace of Pentacles, which looks like a portal. And look at these two cards, how they are basically the same picture. We see a tree with this portal here. And here we see a tree with a portal. You are stepping into a new world, a new dimension. Your experience, once you move away from whatever this energy is that wasn't in alignment with who you are and what you want and you move towards this new energy it's going to be like stepping into a new world it's a whole new experience it's feeling bliss and blessed but also feeling at peace and grounded experiencing abundance in all areas of your life by aligning with what your core values are, what you really want. And you're gaining that clarity through this difficult situation and understanding what you don't want. Amazing. I just love these synchronicities. These cards are so similar. Let me read to you about this card. Hold on. Okay, I'm actually going to read to you this card and this card, both of them. Uh, the meanings are a little bit different, although the meanings go along perfectly with the overall message in your reading. And I do want to share with you that as a tarot reading, you know, I'm not only looking at definitions or meanings of cards I'm also channeling energy and uh, right before I did this reading while I was setting up the space clearing out the second reading I felt this heaviness this tiredness almost like I didn't want to do the reading um, but uh, it was important for me to get the, get it done today so that I could get it out today. So I just kind of pushed through it, even though I felt kind of like heaviness. But as soon as I started working with the energy, the, the message that was coming through and the energy that you're going to be experiencing uh, as a result of the spring equinox and the springtime, I suddenly, everything just started to move fast and fall in place and the understanding came very quickly. And so that's what I feel for you. I feel you letting go of this overwhelm, this weight, this heaviness and experiencing this lightness. All right, let me tell you what this card, what the guidebook says from the creator of this deck. The Earth card offers a moment of reflection and connection. You may be losing yourself and becoming too focused on work, schedules, and to-do list. Sometimes you don't realize how far you've strayed from your relationship with nature and its calming energy. Even those of us who work with nature daily can sometimes get set in our ways and become complacent. This card is a reminder to consciously renew your connection with nature and listen to what the natural world has to stay has to say. Take a step back and breathe, giving yourself space to find balance, clear your mind, and open it to the communication of nature. Let its energy soothe and revitalize you as you ground yourself in the earth. So it's interesting that this card, you know, the description of this card starts out talking about being overwhelmed with schedules, to-do lists, and work. And that's what I felt at the beginning or just before this reading. All right, I want to read to you about the Ace of Pentacles, which is from a different deck. The Ace of Pentacles is the highest manifestation card in the tarot deck. 
it brings the opportunity and energy to be successful, experiencing wealth in your internal and external worlds. The Ace of Pentacles promises success and happiness in all ventures. It symbolizes the magical path of the labyrinth. The labyrinth's path offers one access to the secret garden of the divine, the Garden of Eden. Communing with spirit and returning to the physical world, bringing back the gifts of the communion to create one's own heaven on earth. The gift of physical and spiritual connection is always available. The key to the Ace of Pentacles is blending your spiritual ideas with the world of matter, creating something unique to you. The gift of this Ace is manifestation. Absolutely amazing. And so what you're going to be manifesting is this whole new life, this blessed life of bliss. And it's by recognizing this discomfort, understanding what you don't want. Another thing that they're telling me is that this may be going backwards because it's revisiting something from the past to bring clarity to you as to why this situation is uncomfortable so that you can release it, heal, and move forward stepping into your new, amazing, beautiful dimension, space, world. Love it. I absolutely love this reading for you. So excited for you, pile number three. Wishing you the best. The light in me recognizes the light in you. Bye.